Perhaps of cosmology, I'll quickly finish evolution because that's one thing I wanted to do. I sure. will try to keep your time in mind. But, <laughs> but me, evolution, like, people. This so is to evolution. remind you that you all emerge from something dumb. Okay, now listen to the professor <laughs> and realize that. <laughs> okay, so first of all, with evolution, there is one thing very clear. Like anybody who is telling you that there is a disagreement with biology or in with within the biological community in, with, in terms of evolution is lying. Evolution is well established with biology. They're it's, either they're either lying or they're ignorant of this. They're either lying or they're ignorant or they're insane. Mm. <laughs> in the present world, in past I don't blame them, but in the present world it's pretty much well established. But let's see what Quran really says about human beings mm. and. Again, you can read it in a Judo-Christian narrative where you think Ahad Hadith, and if you do that, that's clearly not scientific. But the question is, what is the bare amount of information that Quran gives, and does that information, like, is that information factually correct or not? Let's just discuss this now. I'm not even going into saying that Quran describes this or does not describe this. That's up to people to know. But I'm just saying, what is the bare amount of information that Quran presents? Sure. Quran talks of creation of human from clay. Point one. Quran says that all every living thing comes from water. Point two. Quran says that in Surah four verse one it says we created you from a single nafs and we created from it its mate. Point three. Uh, Quran says Adam was given the name of all things. Point four. So four points. Uh, mm -hmm. This point, the first thing, like Surah 4, 4 verse 1, you can easily understand it like we all come from a single cell and then that cell splits into two and then from that all humans are come. That, that, that's not difficult to, like that can, like many scholars who have tried to study evolution have, said, have done that. But Quran also says that in Surah 14, so that verse that we created you from one nafs and from it we made its main. You could you could give it that interpretation that we come from one cell which splits and then from that we wow. human beings. actually you know to to be honest I've not actually now that you say it sounds common sense but I've never really thought of that before about that, nafs being referring to a cell I didn't think of that yeah. but that's that that that's just the start of it now I'll tell you what Quran <laughs> really says Quran does say Quran does say that we come from one man and one uh, one woman which it says from Surah 49 verse uh, verse 13. So what do we know? Let's start. So so we keep this in back of your mind and I'll tell mm -hmm. you. We know life comes from non-living uh, matter. That is uh, that is hundred percent sure. It might have started in the Hadean, but definitely started in the eon <coughs> following Hadean, Archean, Archean. So it's first definitely started in that. So, but then how did life start? The, the theory of evolution actually does not deal with how life started. The the yeah. branch of science which deals with this is called abiogenesis. So what, what do we know from abiogenesis? Okay. There is a debate in the, in the experts of, uh, who study abiogenesis. Did the life originate in ocean or did it originate on land? And there are currently... Currently, two famous. There's a very famous hypothesis. It's called clay hypothesis, which says life originated because of self-replicating clay molecules. So there were these clay molecules which had the property of self-replication, and that is because of which the life started. There is some more research done which indicates life might have started on banks of oceans, and which which would have some radioactivity. There are other theories also which indicate that life. There is high prob. I would say there is higher probability for life to have started on in clay, or clay had a non-trivial role to play in life than it than for, for, for than for the converse, because uh, yeah. like these the sheer number of these hypotheses are more. There's also this hypothesis that it started deep within Earth. It's called what deep was. It's I forgot the name of that hypothesis. But then there are these things, and uh, there's also one that it started on the bank of oceans. So and this, then there is so this, so what you're saying is this is uh, a mainstream view within that genre of science on the it's origin of life as that life. life originated from clay is this what we're saying it's one of the views is called clay hypothesis people can google this up and when you google just google abiogenesis you will get that and this clay hypothesis states that life originated from self-replicating clay molecules self-replicating saying... clay molecules people now i'm not saying this is the only one Mm -hmm. There are others. We don't understand. 
Uh, it's and, not but, the one, but it's one of the this, ones. But this is highly probable. And one thing is certain from the sheer number of hypotheses put in for the that like there's high probability that life life originated due to some in at a place where which was some kind of interface of land or uh, and ocean something like uh, beaches and there has, there is a theory that life originated on radioactive beaches so people i think that there was some nice interesting papers written on that so i i would I, again i would not well, put it at the level of a lot a lot does happen on the beach high <laughs> high high probability high probability i'm sure much life has also originated on the beach as well <laughs> uh, well <that's> a life <laughs> <laughs> after the beach. so so high probability that life started from you know from self replicating clay molecules possibly on the beach or deep within earth or in the back of ocean we have these various hypotheses but to to say that life originated from clay is not scientifically wrong in fact it is highly probable but not verified at it's not verified it's, it does not so we should be honest here and say well we are not sure but it is highly possible that life originated from clay mm -hmm. but okay. no definitely okay. verified and there are other opinions uh, and there are some opinions that clay only played a catalyst role there are many many like because this field is again not well understood and there are many hypotheses were sometimes here like so so the, uh, so the idea of how abiogenesis started there's a lot of debate on that but this idea that life started from clay is highly probable life then life or all life originating on from sea this is completely true like life stayed in sea for a very long time before it uh, migrated so all life coming from ocean water we created everything from water will they not then believe 100% true or the way it says the way when you know god created heavens and earth and his throne was you over know, water so this know, is this thing you know wa ja'alna min al ma'i kulla shay'in hay uh, that every living thing it comes from water is this could, could, uh, i mean i've understood this to mean that water is the source of life is that uh, i have you... I, I have understood it as that like like all the origin of every living thing that you see on earth traces itself back to ocean life on okay. land is relative like you're seeing it to um, its kind of habitat uh, yeah. So because can am I am I because I, my understanding is life, as we know it, cannot exist without water. Yeah, but what you're saying is related in evolutionary terms to what I am saying because everything we are predominantly made of water because we came from water. <laughs> ah, it just right. shows okay, up. okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so it's related. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. So yeah. what you're saying is life's habitat being in water is central to its uh it, to its existence that it, that's because it's from water water gave it its existence that's what you're yeah, saying and it came in water for most of its existence it only came to land relatively like few like i think mm. five six hundred i don't remember maybe five six hundred okay. million years ago but for majority of its time it was in water because you know whenever there's things like let's say space exploration or other things one of the things they look for often is water, isn't it? Because doesn't it then uh, correlate with life? Like it is seen as a, if you can find water, it may indicate that there's some life. There is a high probability of the life as we understand it. But we'll come to this debate on what life is. And that's a separate debate in itself. Mm -hmm. I think we've been a bit narrow in that definition. But uh, coming to this, coming sure, to this sure, specific... Sure. Mm. point yes what you're saying is correct but it's also related to what i am saying because mm. uh, say so say life originated in self by self replicating clay molecules or on radioactive beaches uh, or, or or deep in within the on the floor of back oceans or any of these other hypotheses deep within the land there is also one theory that it originated deep within the land and then it went to oceans and it stayed in oceans for a very long time so this idea that all living things come from water is 100 percent correct it came life came from clay it's also correct Hmm, I see. And then, and then, then Quran makes then this idea that you know we come. For, I mean, every one of you, you know, our creation starts from one nafs which splits, and then we come from that. That's fine. But then there is something more beautiful. Quran also says in Surah forty nine, verse thirteen, that all humanity comes from one man, one woman. It does not say that these man and woman were a couple. 
Hmm. That, okay, which I, which I verse think, are you speaking about? Which verse? Sula 49 verse 13. Okay. Sorry, yeah, carry on. Sorry, I'll just bring it up yeah. as well. Yeah. So what do we know about evolution of humankind? And there is something very interesting here. But there is something also clearly and easily misunderstood. So let me let me clarify the misunderstanding before I actually give you that information so that people don't think I'm presenting a wrong information because it can be easily misunderstood. You see, let us is let us take Kohanim, which are the priestly class of Jews. They can't marry okay. converts. You know, there, there's this misunderstanding, by the way, that Jews, you can't convert into Judaism. You can. But if you do, you cannot marry Kohanim. In Kohanim, which are the descendants of Arun, Arun alayhi salam, they cannot marry in converts. So some studies have indicated at least a certain portion of those Kohanims can trace their ancestry back to somebody called, they call them, call him in scientific terminology, Y chromosome uh, uh, Arun. Y the idea is, how do we know that? Because we can trace some, we have mm -hmm. Y chromosome and it can, you can trace your patrilineal lineage through this Y chromosome. Okay. But say yeah. if all the humans in, in some X Y Z factor had died in the world, and only the descendants of only these Kohanim were alive, and the, also the true Kohanim who were actually the descendants of Arun, then you then it would be fair to say that Arun is the father of all mankind. However, it does not mean that at the time of Arun there were no other humans, or he did not have a parent. He did not have his parents. He had parents, and his, his children married other human beings of the time. But none of the trees which did not merge with Harun's tree survived. And only the, the that so the all humans can trace their common ancestry. I'm saying, for example, if, mm -hmm. if that were true, then you would say that all humans could, in principle, only trace their ancestry back to Harun, or all Kohanim who are real Kohanim can trace their ancestry back to Harun. It does not mean Arun was the only human being. It means there were other human beings. He had parents, but every every Kohanin alive today can trace his ancestry back to one person. I is see. that clear? Yes. Yeah, so so really what, what, uh, right, what what what's what you're saying is that Adam Ali Salam um, may it may be the uh, Adam Ali Salam, even though he is the father of humanity as we know it does not necessitate that there were no other humans living parallel with Adam or preceding him. Yeah, so what it does not hmm. necessitate that either in scripture or in science, but what yeah. it would mean that no tree... And, which and did there's not many verses Adam. that actually do support this as well. It's just that because the narrative uh, is generally already superseding yeah. that, it's supplanting that. So people don't pay it. So, for example, verses like in Allah, in Allah, Stafa, uh, Adam, wa Nuhan, wa, that Allah chose, selected uh, uh, Adam. Now, the question was, who did he choose him from? Uh, and, and then people say, well, you know, he made him and then obviously made him as a chosen yeah. one. But th that's because okay. it's. it's so now, yeah. So what do we know scientifically? Well, you know, we can trace our Y chromosome DNA back. And interestingly, we can trace it back to one man living in Africa. Okay. So, so it's sort of say that, of course, this man had parents and he, his children intermarried with other people. But th this fact, <laughs> we can I trace... I thought you were going to say it's... Uh, and that man is Mamadou's great-great-great-great-grandfather. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> don't know if mom was actually tuned in today so so this man this man uh we can trace our uh, this and this is not this is not a question of theory we can do it and we can actually explicitly show it that all humanity today descends from one man which but there is a debate about uh, the only debate that we have is when that man did. So mm -hmm. this man, in terms of scientific terminology, is called Y chromosome Adam. You can Google it, uh, and he possibly lived at uh, around two hundred thousand years ago. Did he? I, I thought, I thought they were gonna uh, right. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. So there's, a debate. Okay. there's a debate mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a debate. Mm -hmm. But the predominant studies show that he it was around two hundred thousand years. Are ago. you are you placing Adam with chromosomal Adam? Is that what we're what you're doing? Because I I because I've always I felt uh, always is an uh, intriguing word, but I felt that Adam Ali Salam was the father of the cognitive revolution. 
uh, uh, the, the one to it boils down to that also, and I'll tell you how. What I, I'm, I, in fact, I've seen your views, and I like them, and I'll tell you how they fit with this view. Uh, sure. On the other hand, we can trace back the ancestry of all living female on Earth to one woman again in Africa, uh, who is called mitochondrial Eve, and then there's a generational. They might have because we cannot, dis uh, you know, we, there, yeah. there's a I debate about when they live. They could have been contemporaries, but there's a higher probability that this Eve, mitochondrial Eve, lived around 150,000 years ago. So Adam lived at least 50,000 years before Eve. <laughs> before or oh, after, I think. I think they put chromosomal Adam. No, the, the dates have changed. Before it was after, and then it became before. Before. Oh, uh, right. Okay. So, so. Uh, and 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 it might be probable that they might finally coincide. But I think if you have this Adam living before Eve, then you can give another interpretation to the verse forty nine uh, surah, like verse four, surah four, verse one. That because it verse says that we created from him, it's made. It might be that Eve might actually be a daughter of Adam from the generations ahead. Mm, I see. I see. Okay. Mm. That might. Be Interpretation, or but we are not sure of the dates. You know, we know that humanity can trace its ancestry back to one man, like my chromosome Adam, one woman, like mitochondrial Eve. We are not sure when they lived. They could, it could have been one is the daughter of another, one is the father of another, mm, no, or a vice versa. Maybe the dates change in future, or maybe they are contemporaries. We don't know much. Yeah. But let's. Yeah, because yeah, you know, I this is the same point that I I mentioned this a while back on my. A good while back on one of my Monday nights and, and in several discussions, private discussions I've had with people that I've said that, you know, one of the things that does stand up for faith, whether people like it or not, but in my perspective, is that, look, science has emerged with all these discoveries and all these amazing things. And obviously it's unearthed things like evolution and it's shown that. But yet, if we're just looking at it from a scientific perspective of randomness, it ought to be that, let's say, as uh, Homo sapiens were adapting, they were evolving, that it ought to be multiple. And it ought to, like, we ought not to be able to trace our ancestry back to just one. It ought to be multiple. Like, if we're uh, if we're looking at it from this thing of pure random, um, it could. Be. Whereas, the... and I said, and I said, and it's interesting how scripture, or you know, it's so easy that it could have just got that so wrong, but it, in a yeah. way, it didn't, and that's and it science is. today unearths that that oh wow okay that's fa and so I, I find that, that very fascinating yeah. And what is more, fa uh, like what is interesting, going back to what you were saying before, is this idea that you were saying that Adam is the father of the cognitive revolution. At the at the basic level of cognition lies our ability to speak. Mm -hmm. And now, now there are three things we seem to be converging. Nobody, I think, has linked them, but there are three independent things we seem to be converging. One is that let's leave mitochondrial E for the moment. She might have lived with Adam, she might have been after her, but let's focus on Adam. But it's interesting how any of the verses of the Quran that speak of human origin, not the story, even the story of Adam as well, never actually mention Eve. The Quran doesn't no. mention Eve, which it is interesting. In, yeah. it, it, it says in Surah 49 verse 13 that we created you from one man and one woman, but it doesn't say that they were couples, right? Can you check that? Right. So yeah. Okay. Let me bring that. Forty nine thirteen. Yep. Yep. Carry on. Sorry, and I'll bring that up. So, but uh, but yeah. The, let's focus on Adam because I think Adam is the person to be focused on here in the whole narration. So let's say two hundred thousand. Let's take this view that Adam came around two to three hundred thousand years. That's the time given. But let's say two hundred thousand years ago, and there is something else which can have its origin at two hundred thousand years. And you know what is that? Modern language, language as we know it. Oh, right. Sorry. Yep. This is the, the popular verse you're referring to of Surah Hujarat, or is it Surah Hujarat, which is, nas inna khalaqnakum min wa untha wa ja'alnakum wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum atqaqum. That, O oh people, we created you from a male and a female. Min wa untha. A male and a female. 
everybody is created from male and female but yeah. it could the, the, it could mean y chromosome adam and mitochondrial eve which is quite uh, accurate but let's sure. focus on this particular thing that 200 let's say it, uh, that it's highly likely that adam came around 200000 years ago even though the time span is between 200 but and what is interesting is it doesn't say out of curiosity i'm just saying not that to get caught up on it but it doesn't say a man and a woman but it says male and female that's i'm just saying that it's interesting but it's okay. interesting yeah, yeah there might be something more to it definitely yeah. we can explore that there might be some more meaning to it but let's come to this particular thing that sure. 200000 years around 150 to 200000 years ago is the time when language and it is 200000 years ago is the time when anatomically modern humans evolved so they are the subspecies of homo sapiens which look like us but evolution of language is even more interesting because if you see noam chomsky's view on it it's very interesting mm-hmm. i find this view very interesting i mean he argues that language came up because of a single mutation like humans were already ready for it but there was the just one missing block which occurred by one random mutation and then he gives this analogy of a crystal you see in crystal if you have like you have water is already cr- very close to freezing temperature and then you have one nucleation and bingo whole of the crystal forms so if if one of the humans had this mutation for sophisticated language it goes from like you can can count 1 2 3 4 5 and then you can jump to infinity when you had this abstract realization which might have occurred through a genetic mutation it would now this is what i'm thinking it would have given his children if it can if it was inherited immense survival advantage and then that is why maybe history dominated and and it also fits with what quran is talking saying quran is saying that the speciality of adam came because god taught him the names of all things with names came you know it's not just spoken language the idea is that language is a, the our language is based on an abstract thinking which is embedded in us genetically embedded in us and because of this abstract thinking we can realize the abstract concepts like god and we can realize many abstract concepts and this is this is something special that we homo sapiens have had or rather anatomically modern humans have had. and it i'm not saying that we have we, this is good but it again it would be interesting if any of the audience wants they could take it up as a phd project maybe relate these three things <laughs> uh, you you're thinking too highly of this audience <laughs> <laughs> no, this is all gcse dropouts this is yeah they still we still like uh, <laughs> But They're you like, know, instead of wasting, what, what instead time of is wasting it? time, <laughs> instead of wasting time with creationist nonsense that is coming from Discovery yeah, Institute, yeah. try relating this. You know, there is the idea of Noam Chomsky's view on language that language yeah. could, could have occurred because of a single mutation in a human. I'm not saying that this need need, need be the only case. There can be other origins of language, and then this would hold meta- metaphor. Noam Chomsky, because a lot of his evidence that he's uh, because he also posited the. Uh, the lad language acquisition device theory in saying stating that the brain is uh, uh he argues hardwired to uh for language so it's it's kind of preset for language as opposed to the other theory that as we're born as children we have the ability to absorb language so th- these are the two kind of theories where noam chomsky is at the head of that the first theory saying no it is not a uh, it is not something socialized it is internal it's it is, it's, it's, it's yeah it's nature it's not nurture and and a lot of the evidence is he's even used for that and then other subsequent people as well have be, has been very compelling of how children even given certain circumstances where they've lived in very kind of pigeon speak have formed their own creole making a complete language themselves independently of their parents and it's um it's it's been there's a lot of research which shows that so, but yeah sorry carry on yeah so this is very interesting that all these things uh, the development of a, mo- a, lang- a, la- a modern language at least a primitive language which then evolved into different modern languages and there's a lot about it in how african languages have more structures than many languages because it, they seem to come from a pre language like like a language which evolved subsequently and lost some of uh, some of the structure but anyway uh, mm-hmm. so this idea that language evolved around 200000 years ago there was 200000 years ago there was you know we can is trace it, the just uh, yeah. uh, just to say there is some argument now that 
uh, Neanderthals had some form of language, but not as sophisticated or as developed uh, as as modern sapiens. So it yeah. seems that they had because the the kind of the way the larynx is kind of placed, it's in between humans and apes, and it seems that they may have had like very high pitched kind of certain sounds. I'm just others did not have. I'm just saying that this idea of abstract language, this abstract. Idea of Excellent. Abstract. Excellent. Abstract. Abstract. Yeah. By language, I don't mean the ability to speak. Abstract reason, ab reason abst in an abstract sense. Mm -hmm. So this idea of uh, this idea of innate ability to reason in an abstract sense, mm -hmm. the it's it's date converging with the development of uh, anatomically modern humans, and it's date converging with Y chromosome Adam. There seems to be something interesting going on at two hundred thousand years, but it might be that you know the, the, it might be there might be more to it, or you know. But this is something that people can research into. But the idea that humans are humans, Adam was given names of all things. It, it again, it's highly probable, not verified. You know that was that the reason why he's still why history dominated. But the idea that we can come from one man, if you just take this idea that we from one man. And you can even add, even though Quran doesn't, I think, explicitly say that as, as explicit dear, as for one man, but even one woman, it's fine. Mm -hmm. These things are scientifically correct. So you don't need to deny a theory of evolution for that. These things are inbuilt in theory of evolution. The only thing is that this man, Adam Ali Sinem, had his parents, had his, had his, you know, had his friends and all this. But then, he, as Quran says, his children, he was proper, like his race dominated. And the, and there is no so it would be right to say that no but there is nobody who is surviving independent of the tree. There oh, were other uh, trees they died, yeah. they died down. So the only tree that survived, so all the tree that that remains to us is Adam and even mitochondria. So mm -hmm. pretty much hundred percent matching with like there is no conflict of data between what Quran is saying and what the theory of evolution is saying. And, and Plus, I, I know I mentioned to you previously that my thinking on on some of this and i've said that the the verses that speak of adam alayhi salam eating from this forbidden fruit whatever it was uh are followed by them covering and you see uh, shame is something which is one a it's a, it's generally a social phenomenon it's in the presence of others that human beings tend to feel uh, but it's also linked to greater self-awareness um, and and I felt that 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 verse is is showing that Adam Ali Salam at this stage of whatever that stage was that phenomenon that he he undergoes he experiences a greater self awareness he experiences shame and he wants to cover you know they try to cover their their nakedness and this made me think that you see. It, it seems, from evidence seems to suggest that other species, Neanderthals and 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 other sapiens as well, they would have covered, they would have had like uh, some kind of coating and things like this. But it made me think that maybe that was simply for warmth and it wasn't to do with shame. And shame may have been just something that came with this greater self-awareness. I, again, I never thought about it, but this is something we need to really research. Like, th there's much more to it, mm -hmm. but there's, there's a lot more to research here. But the important thing that I think we can highlight right now to people is that there is nothing innate in Quran which contradicts evolution. In fact, there's a lot which supports it. I'll end uh, the discussion of evolution, and that will take five more minutes, and hopefully we'll wrap with that. But uh, I'm just worried about your time. <laughs> but in, in Surah 71, Verse 14 says, we created you in stages. Mm -hmm. And in Surah 71, verse 17 says, Khalaqakum atwara, created you in stages. Yeah. And in Surah 71, verse 17, it says, we grew you like a vegetation from earth. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot imagine. Like, if you, see vegetation, ard -de nabata. Mm -hmm. you know, if you see what happens when you grow, when you sow a seed, you, you start with a simple structure and then it diversifies. There cannot be a better metaphor for everything. <laughs> this yeah. is uh, and, and also a also the, you know there's this the verse as well that speaks about uh, uh Allah speaks about the origin of insan 
Um, and it mentions uh, in, in this particular, in the verse, in this particular verse, people say that because Allah is speaking of insan, he says, and that insan, obviously, Al Insan speaking about, they say Adam alayhi salam, that means sulalatim uh, mintin, yeah, that this kind of something, this extract from clay or whatever. And people say, well, that's obviously Adam. So all the Mufassirin write that that's Adam. But then Allah says, Thumma ja'alnahu. Then we placed him nutfatan fi qararim makin. Then we made him a drop of sperm in a, a, a firm place, which will, would be the embryo. Now, uh, uh, you see here, the Mufassirin get confused because the, they say, well, the pronoun him, we placed him. The first him was Adam. It says insan. Then we placed that insan as a drop of sperm. So some people tried to say, well, we can't say Adam was in a womb. So you know what? This is now speaking of someone else. But that seems to break the flow of the verse. Now, other Mufassirin felt that, okay, maybe Adam too then was created in some kind of artificial womb. But I said, well, why, why go to artificial when there were wombs about? You know, that you don't need to create an artificial womb. Wombs already existed. So, yeah. And, and you can also look at it in another way. You know, it starts with, you know, so, uh, clay and then it evolves to, because nutfa can also mean simple life. And then, then it, it might be talking about various stages of evolution. Yeah. Because yeah. what happened? Isn't the form actually happened in evolutionary stages? Yeah. Like if you uh, I, I meant, I meant, I meant from the stage that the Quran is in this verse overwhelmingly supporting that Adam was born of womb. Like he oh, yeah. was. Oh, yeah. This verse oh, yeah. seems to uh, clearly lean that way. Like you could, you could interpret it differently, but in all honesty, you are doing a lot of acrobats and gymnastics in trying to interpret it if you just read that verse with no other you know just with a clear clean slate you read it you would understand that the first insan that is being addressed was in born from womb because that's what the verse says yeah yeah but let's yeah so so I, and I, I even in terms of what happens within the womb is what happened in nature anyway yeah. so and then then this beautiful metaphor about us growing like vegetation from earth in simple words i can't but think of the reason metaphor. why i was stressing that professor is because a lot of people feel that to say adam was born of womb um, is kufr it's disbelief like people feel that this is you know it, because allah says in another verse that about adam oh i created you with my ha own hands so how could this be if he's of womb now, the, this is why I was just stressing that the actual verse of the Quran, another verse of the Quran, see, it states by its, if just looking at it at face value, that Adam was of womb. This is born from womb. That's what, that's what it states. And, and, and it's interesting because the people, like, for example, people come up and say, oh, Adam is created from the hands of God, so how can it be evolution? You see, even if I take Salafi methodology, like here, they would say that we don't interpret this verse because you can't interpret what how hands of God are. That would take you into Asha being an Ashari. So when you can't interpret it, means you can't even negate it. When you can't negate it, you keep going. We do the interpretation. <laughs> 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 because when you're negating it, you're interpreting it. Mm -hmm. What makes you say that the hand of God is not the theory of evolution, <laughs> like the process of evolution and this you know, and it, it goes back to what I was saying, you know, evolution is enhanced by biology. Okay, I see and... what you're saying, that you, what you're saying is, where Allah is saying that, uh, that I've created you with my hands, the hands of God could be interpreted as the force of evolution, the nature of uh, evolution yeah, itself. It's like, hmm. Evolution is like a reflected light, which reflect, it goes back to that. Which you see, to be evolution. fair though, a lot of people understood this, just by language, you understood it to mean with, you know, like as Ibn Hazm would have written and other people, Bil Inaya, that you, that God created Adam, like as in Adam is a creation, a result of care and delicate, like delicate, to show a kind of bond and affection. You know, if you say, look, I, 
uh, brought you up, like I brought you up with my own two hands. I, you know, to a child, it doesn't it doesn't mean you physically brought up the child with your own two hands. It's kind of de- reflecting a, a delicacy and intimate kind of relationship that you have with the person. Hmm. Yeah. So I think with that we have like we have an, like the main problem that they have had what happens to the creation of Adam. It's very simple. Uh, like the the idea that humanity comes from one one person is not the basic data given in Quran is not again science. The only problem is this person had parents. And he had, there were other trees and there is no tree remaining which has, which is not from this person. Uh, you might argue uh, in any way, but this basic data given in Quran and the fact that life can originate from clay and that life has come from ocean. I mean, and you, it's know, so... and you know, just to be clear that because we do carry part, m- most people carry part um you know dna a tiny part from other species as well like in the sense uh let's say one to four percent neanderthal non non africans yep. and then maybe one percent to two percent of uh denisovans and and they say a fourth species as well potentially that isn't really a contradiction in the sense of an overall because the overwhelming majority is what it is is that's I mean, yeah, it, it's like being, like if the true Kohanin, they might contain, if the true Kohanin who can trace their ancestry back to our own, they might have other trees mixing in. But yeah. at least one, like one of their ancestors goes back to our own. That yeah. is the important thing. So and it, here, it's, it's, and not, here it's, it's the overwhelming thing does go back to chromosomal Adam. It doesn't, Homo sapiens no, no, are Homo sapiens. Yeah. Like, you know, like by the time we have, we have, we have our parents, 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 we, you know, the trees diversify. One of that person that we can trace our ancestry back to is Adam. This is important. Yeah. And then there are other trees mixing. So, which is very interesting. And it's, it, and this is completely correct. The, it, 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 yeah. So, so there's nothing in Quran which contradicts evolution. In fact, it, uh, we're, willingly supports it and people don't even need like some people who try to justify evolution with Quran they go to metaphorical interpretations of Adam you don't need to do that because you know what Quran is stating is perfectly correct mm-hmm. it is only that if you start viewing it in terms of if, with the help of Ahad Hadith and, Hadith and Genesis narratives and imagine that Adam had no parents and there were no other trees and no, no other humans then you would get into trouble and you know, you, I, I always I, I marveled how the Quran never explicitly ever it avoids to say certain things. Like even when it's speaking of Jesus and they ask of Jesus, it could have just very easily just said, like it could have just said, look, by the way, Adam had no parents. There's nothing, and you know, if the Quran had said that, the people in the day and age would have just accepted it as well. It wouldn't have, the message wouldn't have flopped. But because people wouldn't have known about evolution in that sense, and they would have just accepted that, okay, you know, fair enough. There was just one person and he came out of nowhere. But the Quran never said that still, despite the audience being, you know, very receptive to even that idea. 